Look, if you're still doing bro split workouts, you are potentially missing out on a stupid amount of gains. I'm talking stupid amount. And in today's video, I'm gonna explain exactly why you might be missing out on the gains and how to structure a program, break down one of the best programs you can follow if you wanna maximize the amount of gains you make in a small amount of time, and you can start following that ASAP. Let's do it. What's good YouTube, it's your boy, John Mango. Presenting Beyond the Iron, where we're looking to take your fitness and your nutrition further so you may change your life forever. And now, if you're new to the channel, I just wanna go ahead and say welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. On this channel, I like to bring a lot of fitness tips, tricks, strategies, workouts, meal plans, everything, product reviews, whatever the case is to help you get to your fitness goals faster, okay? So if you feel like that's something that'll interest you and you really think that I can help you out, then by all means, consider subscribing. Subscribing. We're gonna dive into the content of today's video, which is explaining the push-pull legs routine. Obviously, there's tons of videos on YouTube about this already. I wanted to bring my take and I wanted to bring it to my viewers, okay? A lot of people still don't really understand what is the push-pull leg split, how does it work, and why is it better than the traditional bro split workout? Well, I'm about to cover all of that right now, but before I do, I wanna let you know that just like many other videos that I make, I like to make sure that it's backed up by fact. So if you want, I recommend you scroll all the way to the bottom of the description where I'm gonna have some studies listed out backing up certain points I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. All right, and at the end, if you stay till the end, I'm gonna explain exactly why the bro split workout even became famous in the first place because you're probably wondering, well, why am I so convinced that this is the best split to do or why do all my buddies do this split? Well, we're gonna cover that at the end. Let's go ahead and jump into the push pro legs and it's superiority over the bro split. Now, to start it off, we're gonna talk about frequency. One of the biggest reasons why the push pull legs program is superior to most bodybuilding typical bro split workouts, and by the way, if you don't know what a bro split workout is, what I'm referring to is chest Monday, back uh, Tuesday, biceps Wednesday, abs Thursday, arms, you know, whatever the case is, splitting up one muscle group at a time is what I refer to when I say bro split. This just happens to be the name that the fitness industry gave it. The push pull legs is essentially, as the name implies, day one is a push day, day two is a pull, day three is legs. Now after that, you can either rest or just immediately repeat it. Obviously, this is not set in stone. You could obviously do a legs push pull, legs pull push. You can do a pull push legs. Whatever the case is, you can split it up how you want. Um, um, but that is the essential premise and the reason why we call it push pull legs is the following so push day is not just a chest day but it's chest shoulders and triceps so essentially any muscles and all muscles that are included in pushing exercises pull would be the opposite where you're really targeting the entire back the traps uh, in my case also the shoulders things like this are pulls and the biceps and then legs is pretty self-explanatory I hope so as you'll note push pull legs groups these muscle groups together and it actually has you repeat the same muscle groups a couple times throughout the week. And this comes down to that first point, frequency. Frequency is how often you train a body part, muscle group, lift, anything in the gym. Frequency has been shown over the last few years. We have concluded 100% that frequency is one of the top factors to actually predicate how much muscle you're gonna build and how quick you can build it. So that being said, frequency and at least for natural lifter, because I do target a natural gym goer audience here. I'm not necessarily speaking to steroid users, although I do still feel like a lot of this information is applicable to them. But for the natural athlete or the natural gym goer that is not on any performance enhancing substances, which happens to be the majority, for you, protein synthesis, which means the time when your muscles are building and repairing bigger and stronger and faster, is only elevated for approximately 48 hours. Obviously, this is a give or take. It all depends on the individual and um, you know how hard and how much you stimulate in muscle growth. It's also gonna depend on nutrition, but roughly the maximum amount of time that protein synthesis will elevate for is 48 hours. In other words, two days. Now, here's the deal. You're doing a bro split, right? And you hit chest on Monday. The next time you hit chest is, well, gonna be next Monday. So that leaves you seven days 
worth, in other words, 168 hours, if I got the math right, before you hit the next one, right? Or maybe 144 hours, whatever the case is. It's a lot of time. Protein synthesis is only elevated up until, say, Wednesday, and then you're going to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday without elevating protein synthesis in the chest again. So, also we can look at it this way. With a bro split, or hitting one muscle group per week, you are only hitting that muscle group a total of 52 times in the year max, if you stay consistent. Whereas in the push-pull legs method, where we up frequency to twice a week or more, you're gonna have at least 104 of those same workouts in the same year. So frequency is huge here, and this is actually the biggest reason why push-pull legs is that much more effective. Now let's talk about volume. Volume is arguably the most important factor when it comes to muscle growth. In other words, volume is the total amount of poundage you're lifting on a day-to-day, week-to-week, and month-to-month basis. Now, volume has to increase over time, okay? So that is essentially where the overload is coming from on your muscles. However, for people that do bro splits, and let's say, let's use the chest example again, my favorite example, you're doing a chest day, usually what people will do, and also what I did at one time, was you would just load up on your chest. You would do so many sets, so many reps, tons of drop sets, burn sets, super sets, everything you could do to just try to build that muscle, right? Well, that's actually the most ineffective thing you can do. And the reason for that is the following. What happens is when you're working out, you can actually only elevate protein synthesis to a certain extent, okay? Meaning you can only stimulate a certain amount of muscle growth. So in other words, if your maximum muscle growth is achieved at 10 sets, Another 20 sets on top of that is not going to result in more muscle gain. As a matter of fact, it will most likely result in less muscle gain due to impairing your recovery and simply breaking the muscle down so far to a point where you're taking it past failure, you're frying your nervous system, and it's actually taking you a much longer time to recover than it should. So yes, there is such thing as doing too much in one sitting, okay? Especially since protein synthesis is only elevated that certain amount for 40 48 hours, it's really not necessary or practical to be smashing the hell out of your chest. I remember I used to go by that saying, I was like, listen, if you can open a door with no problem after chest day, you did it wrong. Well, turns out, I was wrong. Here's another cool thing about the push-pull leg system is that you're actually able to hit more volume on a week-to-week basis because you can split up that volume in more practical chunks throughout the week. So let's say, like I said before, 10 sets is how you're gonna stimulate maximum muscle growth. Given your reps, your intensity is just right, 10 sets is good. So instead of doing 10 sets and wasting an extra 20 sets in that same session and getting the same amount of muscle growth regardless, if you hit 10 sets on Monday, you get muscle growth for until Wednesday, and your protein synthesis drops back down, but you're also recovered because you did less volume the first day, all of a sudden now, you have an opportunity to do the same volume on day two. So that means that you now have done 20 total sets that are working towards building your muscle in one week, whereas before you were only doing 10 sets that truly worked towards the muscle. Not only that, but your recovery is gonna be much greater, much more effective. You're gonna be able to overload and focus on multiple exercises at once, and you're simply maximizing your time in and out of the gym, okay? So I hope this is starting to make sense as to why the push-pull leg system is superior. Let's talk about another reason reason why, and that's gonna be actual focusing on different muscle groups and strength gain. Now let's talk about another reason why it's so much more superior, and that's gonna be you can focus on multiple lift mastery. Now what is that? Honestly, it's a term I just came up with myself, but what I mean is this. How you get better at a specific lift, let's say the bench press, the pull up, the squat, the deadlift, whatever the case is. How you get better at the exercise is the more often you do it, okay? So how do you get better at the bench? Well, you essentially have to train your mind through that consistent motor pattern over and over and over. This is the same reason why you see a beginner lifting on a bench press and they're shaking and they're going up and down and they're sideways, right? And that is also the reason why it's harder for them to judge their failure point. A more advanced lifter, like yours truly, 
His form is impeccable. His form is clean. He moves the bar in a very clean manner, right? That is a result of practice through the exercise. Now, if you practice an exercise twice throughout the week, as opposed to cramming it all in one session, it has been shown to produce superior results in getting better in that lift, which also means getting stronger in that lift, increases your ability to overload in that lift, therefore resulting in potential greater muscle gain. So another thing and something I prefer to do is you're able to target certain muscle groups a lot better or you're able to target multiple different exercises. So let's say one day you want to focus on your pull-ups. You go in and the first exercise you start with is the pull-ups. The next back day that same week, you're able to focus all your energy on another lift. That other lift may be tailored towards your weak point that you want to bring up, another muscle group you want to bring up, or maybe just getting stronger in general. Maybe it's a barbell bent over row. Whatever the case is, now you have two opportunities to do that in the week. All right, so I hope that I covered enough reasons as to why the push pull legs is much better. And if you're wondering, okay, well, how do I make a push pull legs program? I will be coming up with a video next week or in two weeks describing you exactly how I structure my own push pull leg workouts and actually how I'm able to put a twist on it to make it a little bit more customizable but still get the benefit of the higher frequency. So guys, subscribe and be looking out for that video. Now, if you stayed until this point, I'm gonna keep my promise. Let's go ahead and talk about a few things here. One is, is there any advantage to the bro split? And the second thing is what you're waiting for if you're still here, why is the bro split so common? And why does it seem to work for so many people? Let's get into this right now. All right, so the first thing is the only advantage that a bro split could have, could have over a push pull legs is the fact that it may increase adherence. What adherence means is your ability to stick to that program. And the reason why is because, let's face it, some people, whether it's ignorance, uh, them not knowing any better, or just straight up preference, they would prefer to do one muscle group per day in the week, right? So if that's the case, Although it's not optimal, and you could do a more optimal split like a push-pull legs, if you don't enjoy the more optimal split, the chances of you sticking to it are lower. And that may result in you ultimately falling off, getting bored, or just not wanting to continue. In which case, a less optimal program done consistently will always produce better results than a more optimal program done less consistently, right? So the best program in the world, not being performed will still get you zero results. Whereas the least best program in the world done consistently over time will still produce results. And that I say is the only potential benefit of the bro split. Also, let's talk about the uh, important concept here, which is why has the bro split become so popular to the point where almost everybody just feels like that's the way it should be structured. Well, it's very simple actually. You have uh, a bit of a broken telephone thing going on here. So let me break it down like this. First off is marketing. Now, back in the day when we started really, uh, bodybuilding really started to become more and more popular, all we had as a source of information were magazines, right? Flex Magazine, Muscle Insider, and whatever else, right? Now, these magazines would feature sponsored athletes, which would typically be IFBB Pro Bodybuilders. These are the massive guys that you see that are, whether you think so or not, they are on steroids, okay? So, the problem with that is steroids changes the game fundamentally. Your protein synthesis is elevated much longer. You are able to tolerate much more volume, intensity, uh, you will benefit a lot from a bro split and ultimately from any split. If you take steroids correctly and do everything right, then you will most likely build more muscle at 10 times the rate of a natural human. I am not condoning steroids, actually quite the opposite. I don't recommend anybody ever do them because it simply does not seem worth it to me just to gain some muscle. That being said, these pro bodybuilders would come out and say, well, this is what I do. I just blast a muscle group 30, 40 sets in one session. Well, that's great because you can do it. You don't have natural human levels of testosterone running through your veins, dog. But me, I come along. I'm a naturally skinny guy. I'm a hard gainer. I got the gains going on now, right? But I'm here. I come in and I say 30 sets. Well, fuck it. I'm going to do 40 sets then. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, 
I can open a door. Okay, more sets, right? So obviously that led to me making almost zero gain. I mean, I made some gains, but they were not optimal and I felt like I was busting my ass and please believe I did not look anything like these bodybuilders. So obviously I ended up doing digging. Research is below in the description if you wanna check it out for yourself and I realized, wow, uh, that really changes the game and the way that results are created. Another thing is this. What people don't realize is the fact that, let's say Arnold Schwarzenegger, one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time, who was one of these guys preaching certain splits, if you look at his program, he actually followed something like a push-pull legs, except he did legs, uh, he did quads, chest, back, all in one day. His workouts were like three to four hours, but he did them multiple times throughout the week. Arnold Schwarzenegger did the higher frequency. He understood that not only could his body take that extreme amount of volume due to genetics and obviously steroids, but he understood that frequency is key. If you can hit the muscle group more, it's better. There is still a point to which it might be too much to hit them. You don't want to hit them every day for certain circumstances. Again, I will be dropping videos regarding all that stuff coming out soon. So I definitely recommend you subscribe if you're interested in that kind of stuff. But that is the reason why we have been convinced over the years. Then you got these guys that are going on doing chest, shoulders, buys on steroids, and now it's put out on the internet for everyone to see. One person picks it up, they start doing it. They're gonna see some results regardless. Up first, they tell the next person, and the next person, next thing you know, we've got an epidemic of bro splits and miseducation in our industry. So that is the reason I bring you these these types of videos to help educate you, make sure you make the most optimal decision because at the end of the day, nobody, and I mean nobody, should be spending three hours in the gym unless it is your profession. And I'm pretty sure it isn't. This is how to get the most bang for your buck, to get the most efficient results, the most optimal way, the happiest way, the best way. And uh, again, I'm gonna explain a little bit more about how to go create your own push-pull leg split or any variation of that sort uh, in my upcoming videos. So that's all I had to say I hope you guys uh, understood the argument and, and uh, you know let me know in the comments below what you think do you follow a bro split did I change your mind or did I not change your mind why or why not I'd love to hear from you I'd love to have a discussion going but that's gonna be it for today's video as always I appreciate you guys watching my name is John Mango representing beyond the iron where I'm looking to take your fitness and your nutrition further so you may maybe stop doing the bro split you may change your life forever that is my mission, that is my purpose. If you guys agree with it, if you're on board, show me you're on board, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. I'll see y'all in that next video. I'm out.